Hey, what's up, guys? It's Shaq. Finally, 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 Toyota Press Room has finally re released two new cars today. They have released the 2021 Toyota Sienna as well as the 2021 Toyota Venza um, SUV or CUV. And typically, I was going to say these cars will probably... We would have seen them at the New York Auto Show at the Java Center, but due to this coronavirus outbreak, we are now just getting the um, breaking news press release from Toyota um, Press Room. So, really, I mean, we have been waiting for this Sienna for a long time. It has definitely been a long-awaited and overdue redesign, and a lot of people were looking forward to it, especially ever since the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica came out with the plug-in hybrid Everyone was just waiting, waiting, waiting for this, just to see what Toyota would do. And finally, 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 we have the new redesigned Toyota Sienna 2021. And I'm going to show you guys my first impressions, a little bit of thoughts and opinions, and I want to hear from you guys. So please put it down in the comment section below. I want to hear what you guys think about the new Sienna. And, you know, what are your first impressions? Obviously, there's not they're not in showrooms yet. Uh, probably later this year, maybe the... Um, they'll be a little late because they are built in in the United States, so they might be coming in a little late because the uh, outbreak. So this is the first image that they give you. If you go to just Toyota Newsroom, uh, pressroom.toyota.com, you'll see that's the first thing they came up with is all new 2021 um, Sienna, and you can you know read up on this. So the Venza also came to the United States now officially. Now this is breaking news for. Monday, May 18th, 2020. Um, the Venza is coming to the U.S. Um, it's a s small crossover. They have it in other countries. It's pretty popular, pretty successful, and now it's finally coming to the U.S., so pretty excited for that. Um, but as you can see, they're going to be um, coming out of the Plano, Texas plant, and uh, we're going to show you guys this right here. So let's see what do I think about this my first impression is I don't like the front end at all I mean I get it the whole styling it's going with the rest of Toyota's body language and you can see in the rest of their cars it's the same yeah in their sedans at least um, it's the same thing so you know like their Camry's the cords I'm mean, not not the cords but Camry's Avalon's Corollas even the headlight you can see they kind of come from the Corollas let me show you guys a few more pictures, and you can look at all these specs and stuff yourself. Again, go to pressroom.toyota.com, and you'll get all this stuff. So, really, they haven't shown shown us any of the base models yet, but what we are getting to see is we're seeing the upper-level trims, the Limited, the Platinum, etc., etc. So, from this picture right here, my first thing was like, I don't like it at all. It's not wagony at all, and I get it. People don't want a minivan, but... Those of us who are buying Siennas, at least in my opinion, we do want a minivan. That is the reason why we are buying a Sienna over something like a Toyota Highlander. Typically, if you see most of these automotive brands, they have, you know, a minivan and an SUV that's kind of comparable. So whoever doesn't want the minivan, they get the SUV. Toyota has done something a little different here where, in my opinion, this almost looks like the new Highlander to me. As far as the body shapes go, see this little arch here? Like, are they trying to be an SUV with a sliding door? I don't understand. So, if you look, that's why I have the Toyota website open. I'm going to show you guys what the um, new 2021 Highlander looks like. And it doesn't have it here, but I think, yeah, 2020 is a new shape. So, 2020 is when the Highlander was redesigned. And you can see it's got the same, you know, very thin headlights. The headlights, I think, are more in tune with the uh, Corolla, as you can see here, that little edge thing, lip, I think the uh, headlights are more similar to the Corolla with the new, see how they have this, you know, angle here, looks like they got the same thing going here, same design language, and then the grill looks absolutely, you know, obviously they took it out of the Avalon, as you can see here, that's the same grill, lower end fascia, I don't like it, I don't think it's good, it looks good at all, but again, this is my opinion, so I want to really hear from you guys, and you know, you guys can tell me what you guys think. So, to, back to the Highlander for a moment. This is the Highlander, and I'm going to turn this around, show you guys. Um, let's see how this works. It's not going. 
All right, so as you can see, these are the same body lines, kind of. It got, it's got the hump here, and it's got the straight line, and it goes up like that. So you can see on the on the new Sienna, you have the same thing. You have a hump here, straight line, and then up here. And, again, it is obviously longer than the, uh, the Highlander, but a lot of people who typically don't want, you know, they want a family hauler, they want something economical, they want this, they want that. They want everything that a minivan has, but they don't want a minivan. So they end up buying something like this, which is a crossover SUV. You know, it's not body on frame. It's still unibody. It has four wheel drive. It looks like a truck sort of, and I've made comments on this, how I feel about this in the past, but to me, these are just minivans. You know, they're almost the new minivans of today. So as you can see, this and this is quite similar. I think the Sienna has definitely I mean, there's a lot of new things in here that I really like, and I've already read through this, but I'm going to mention a few of the things down, you know, as we go for this video. But there's a lot of things in the new Sienna that I really appreciate, and you know, it's really futuristic. It's really the right move in the right direction. But at the same time, this is something I personally don't like: is the front end design, as well as the, even the side, this little hump in the line. I feel like it's trying too hard to be something that it isn't. It's trying too hard to be cooler an SUV and I'm a little old school when it comes to minivans where I like them to be big long and I essentially they're a minivan they need to be a van that's smaller and compact and you know I'm sure this Sienna's got plenty of space definitely more space and more creature comforts more versatility than the Highlander but at the same time I feel like they are trying to appease that market a little more and in my opinion it's it still is a good move in the right direction, but they are probably just taking away their own customers from the Highlander. A lot of people probably go in and say, hey, I want Toyota Reliability, I want seven seats, I want three rows, but I don't want a minivan. And those people end up buying a Highlander because they definitely don't end up buying an Odyssey or Pacifica or you know anything else. So those people were the people who were buying those Highlanders, and now... Well, now they're going to say, okay, well, you know, you could buy the 2021 Sienna. It's not like a minivan anymore. But you might lose out on those customers that do want a minivan. So, definitely a bold design. I mean, again, the body language is still going with the, you know, what Toyota has been going with the recent in the recent years. But there's a lot of new technology in here that is pretty exciting. Um, it's going to be new. It's going to be exciting. So, let's dive in a little deeper into it and i can't wait to get my hands on one of these vans but um i mean all the safety features these are kind of not even you know big news anymore i mean we're used to seeing all this lane departure you know lane trace automatic high beams blah 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 all this stuff is nothing new but really what really caught my attention um is further down but this like see this to me is like an suv you've got the thing you got the center console this is all an suv and it's going to be tight this is going to be tight for the driver you know, to me, a minivan has always been like a couch seat, nice and roomy, lots of space, whereas this, now you're getting a little more sophisticated, something more like an SUV should be, um, where you see you have this covered here, and it's really not what I like. And again, I, I can't wait for you guys, you know, I want to hear what you guys think, those of you who own a Sienna, those of you who are interested in the new Sienna, those of you who are waiting for the new Sienna, and see this and say, eh, I don't like it. Because even with the old uh, or the current generation Sienna, you don't have a connect between the center console and the uh, dash. You know, it sticks out a little bit, but it's still got, you know, you still throw your purse. And I mean, that's what this is for. I guess they want your purse to be here. But again, I, I just like having that open space. And that's why I chose a minivan over an SUV for so long. So again, noise, noise quieting, this and that, blah, blah. Now, the TNG8K platform, this, I believe, is pretty much the same platform that your Camry is built on. So, all these cars are coming on the same platform, super reliable, super you know durable. They've got great, um, Toyota's great with all that stuff. Um, again, more safety features. All right, so the hybrid, this is what I really want to talk about. This is kind of the biggest, you know, most innovative thing about the Sienna, and um, I think they definitely deserve being four years late to the to the thing because I know Toyota, when they come out with something, it's refined. It's you know it's the best of the best. They they don't just cut to the chase, throw something out, and then have a bunch of recalls. And yeah, there might be some recalls on this kind of new um, stuff. I would refrain from buying it in 2021 
Maybe I'd wait for the 2022 year just to, you know, I'd let them work out a few more bugs. But they do work out a lot of their bugs um, before they, you know, release something. And I'm guessing, I'm not 100% sure, but this 2.5 liter engine, double overhead cam, four cylinder engine, seems like it's coming right out of the Camry too. So they've had this engine for a long time. It's refined and true. And look at this, 243 total horsepower and 33 combined MPG fuel economy. That's highway and city combined. Now, the hybrid Sienna will not have any kind of a plug. Like, see, there's no plug here. Unlike the Chrysler Pacifica, where you just plug it in and you get X amount of miles, fully electric, no gas at all. The Sienna is taking a little bit of a different approach, where they are ha they have hybrid, they have electric batteries, they have um, electric motors, and... There is no plug-in option for right now. So this is going to save you guys money in terms of, you know, installing potentially a uh, battery charger in your garage, etc. Plus, um, I think it's just as good, if not better, because you will just stop for gas, and it's just less technology um, in a better... I mean, it, I feel like it's a better package overall. It's more reliable. So as you can see here, it says many Sienna's owners have been repeat customers. In 2021, might be their second, third, or fourth Sienna over the years. Now, it's strictly gas and go, like I said before. And like I said before, the see this interior is all connected. I don't like that. I feel like this is, again, too much of an SUV from my liking, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Now, the hybrid fuel economy is going to be the biggest selling point because Right now, even the Chrysler Pacifica, when it's running on gas, it is not getting 33 miles per gallon combined. And that's going to be what Toyota is really going to kill it at. And I feel like this is going to be a big fall for the Odyssey because the Odyssey is still maxing out around 22 miles per gallon. And you're talking an extra 11 miles per gallon. You're almost into a uh, sedan range. And I'm sure that has a lot to do with the design. Why the design it looks the way it is is because they need that aerodynamics and whatnot. So the all-wheel drive system. Now this is one of I think the biggest differences that's going to come in between the Highlander and the Sienna. Now the Highlander does have a real four-wheel all-wheel drive system. It's got a transfer case. It's got a um, a drive shaft. It's got a real differential, etc., etc., etc. But uh, it still can't go off-road. I mean, it can go only go off-road for so much. I mean, it's not got. It doesn't. Oh, my bad for a phrase it does not have that articulation to do any serious off-roading it doesn't have locking differentials or anything like that so it's really just an all-wheel drive you know suv that you could take all to dirt roads and stuff and not get stuck it's i mean it's a good all-wheel drive system but in my opinion this is going to be better because the sienna will definitely have more room and with their new all-wheel drive system called electric on-demand all-wheel drive they will literally change the minivan segment with this thing. So pretty much they're putting in, from what I understand, and I guess we have to see this in person, but they're putting in electric motors on the back wheels um, to power the back wheels in an all-wheel drive system. So there's no drive shaft, none of that fuss, none of that's all that space um, taking stuff. So you're going to have a lot more room inside. And that's really one of the biggest issues with the all-wheel drive minivans always was. Now, it's going to work seamlessly, but the best thing that I like and what I'm really excited and I can't wait to drive is it could send up to 80% of the driving force to the rear wheels to prevent front wheel slip. And, yeah, that's to prevent front wheel slip, but for someone like me, when I floor a minivan, all I can think of is that front wheel is just dragging me along and how that front wheel drive is just doesn't feel good. With this, I think we're going to really you know, get past that, and it's going to be a big improvement, um, excuse me, a major improvement over um, the current front-wheel drive setups that they have. Uh, again, you can, you can read all these um, features. The entertainer, yeah, I mean, they have all these, you know, DVDs and this and that, and this is all expected. I mean, you expect this in a minivan. And I can expect this price to go up. The Sienna, I mean, if you look at the new Odyssey, it's expensive. I mean, it goes almost close to $60,000. I expect this Sienna fully loaded, everything, you know, hunkered down, you know, all-wheel drive, luxury, limited, whatever. It could be close to sixty grand, if not maybe even a little more than $60,000. And that's a lot of money, but there's a lot you're getting for that money um, in this van or this 
SUV sort of thing. I mean, this is really the ultimate family, you know, someone like me might say, oh, I don't like the way it's shaped, but for the family holder of the future, this is definitely it, because it looks modern, and it's going to get that good highway mileage. Um, so far, they've really shown us uh, two trims, a lot of limited and platinum grades, and I'll show you the pictures, I'll show you the pictures, these are the pictures of these trims. There's a lot of accents and this and that that make them look nice. I'm curious to see what these trims will look like in a base model. So let me show you some pictures now. We're going to go to the pictures. Where are the pictures? Where does the pictures go? Oh, there it is. So I'm going to show you guys the pictures now. And where the hell did they go? Images. There we go. So one of the things I want to show you with the pictures is you see the second row. You've got this right here. And now the seats still go, you know, full. They got recliners. I mean, truly a luxury product. This whole center thing, I wonder if the base models won't have this. And that might, you know, be a big thing. And I can see, I think they might have power seats. Um, they've got USB ports. I mean, they've got all tons of good things. They've got a cubby down here. There's a lot of stuff in this car. But again, these are the premium models that they're showing us. They have a vacuum, a freezer, cool box. I mean, the ultimate family road trip vehicle for sure. But at the same time, like I said, is it what we're looking for in terms of a working minivan? Are those base models going to be as versatile as the current generation minivans are? Like What I love about the Chrysler Town Countries and the Dodge Grand Caravans is that you can have a flat load floor, put all of the five rear seats down, and you pretty much have a cargo area un, you know, unmatched with any other purse any other you know vehicle and to me that's one of the biggest selling points of a minivan over an suv something like the High the highlander is that cargo capacity so if this loses that i'm you know curious to see what the market would see and i want to hear from you guys again let me know in the comment section below what you guys think um there's a lot of stuff on this website lots of um b-rolls lots of pictures um i can make another video on the venza if you guys want to see it i'm not too much about the venzas though Again, it's something that's been out for a while, and it's just coming to the U.S. now. But I can't wait to actually see this Sienna in person, drive it. I'm exci very excited about that hybrid system. I don't know if they're going to lose the V6, and it's just going to be the four-cylinder uh, four with the hybrid, or they're going to have a V6 option in the lower trim levels, uh, the same 3.5, and they're just going to have the hybrid four-cylinder in the higher trim levels. What they're going to do exactly, we don't know. But definitely looking forward to it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you guys are going to be buying this. If you guys were waiting for this, because I was waiting for this a long time. When the when the Pacifica came out, I said, oh shit, Honda and you know Toyota has got to do something now. And then Honda came out with their Odyssey, and it was okay. But the Sienna is definitely changing the game. And you know I think Toyota is going to be moving more towards uh, a 10-year life cycle with their Siennas. The current generation van has run from 2011 up to now, 2020. So that was the span of nine years. I think this is going to do about the same thing where it's going to run well, nine, no, for 10 years it ran. And I think this is going to do the same thing, um, more like the Land Cruiser. Even the Land Cruiser is now spreading out their life cycle. There's having refreshes, but they're not changing the design like we used to see before every every four or five years they would change the design. Now, I don't think we're going to see that as much anymore. So again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Did you guys like this fan? Are you guys getting one? Et cetera, et cetera. If you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe for more videos. Again, I will definitely be chest driving one of these when they come out. And uh, enjoy your minivan and stay safe.